Hey everyone, uh, I had a couple of questions regarding what I take on the water in terms of safety. So I'm going to make a video today that covers some of the things that I take to either keep me out of trouble or to get me out of trouble if things go sideways. So you can disregard this because this is only there for audio recording purposes. Um, so let me start with this guy. This is a Pelican ripoff waterproof case. As you can see, the seals here that will keep things waterproof if I tip the kayak. This will live inside the hull of my kayak. If I open this up, uh, these actually, these devices actually live inside as well. And this is a monocular. This is probably more of a a toy and not necessarily a safety item but unlike backpacking uh, with kayaking you have a little bit of leeway in terms of space and weight um, this also lives inside the case and this is what they call one of those um, battery jump starters and so as you can see it has the USB um, output where I can recharge my smartphone if I need to and I can also connect my fish finder to these leads and this battery pack will power my fish finder for about probably five, six hours depending on the brightness level. Okay, so um, inside the blue case um, lives another kind of like waterproof case, a little bit of redundancy there. And inside that case I have an old school compass and then I have a headlamp. This is not my primary headlamp. It's actually lighting is I think one of those areas where you should have redundancy. So this is actually my secondary headlamp. Um, I have a multi-tool here and this is a little bit different than the plier type and that's because having this little crescent wrench uh, serves me better in terms of maintaining or fixing the, mirage, the Hobie Mirage drive on the water. Redundancy and finally an Allen wrench. Okay, um, in terms of communication, well actually let me save that for last. All right, let me move this over. So this is an overview of the vest that I use when I'm kayaking. Okay, this will go over, I repeat, this will go over my PFT. So I have a high quality PFT that I wear underneath and in the past I did try wearing some of those PFTs with the multiple pockets but in the end they simply did not have room for everything that I wanted to carry okay so I guess I will start here and then work my way clockwise okay so main pocket here I have a little um, microfiber cloth that I can use to you know wipe down the fish finder screen my sunglasses my GoPro or whatever here I will carry extra batteries inside a Ziploc bag. These are for the GoPro. And then this is a lithium ion 18650 battery that I will explain later. Also inside here is a hook sharpener. Okay. And then if it's lobster season, I will carry a lobster slash crab gauge here and by the way this is on um, a bowline I, th I think it's called a bowline I like using the bowline because it is easy to tie and more importantly easy to untie okay inside here I will carry a handheld GPS now this is actually not the model that I carry the model that I carry is a Garmin I think GPS map 78 SC. I will insert a picture. Um, I couldn't find it so I'm using this one in its stead. But um, again navigation is definitely one of those areas where you have to have redundancy. The GPS 78 SC does float which is a big deal and it's meant for use in marine environments. Okay um, here this is where most of the safety stuff is car carried okay here i have a i hope i pronounced this right 
Mora knife. And I like these knives as opposed to the flip out kind because you can just grab and pull and you are ready to go. Uh, in case you maybe tip and you get your uh, body entangled in some cord or something like that, this is the quickest way to get at a blade. This um, is a serious marine whistle or emergency whistle. Um, it'll work when it gets dark, oh, I'm sorry, it'll work when it gets wet and it is super loud and I have it connected to a pink uh, paracord so I, I know exactly which cord to pull if I need to get at the whistle. This is my fishing license. Um, here I have my camera. Okay. And as you can see, I have it connected with some kind of a cheap um, lanyard. And the reason I have this here is because I've already dumped uh, a digital camera into the drink and I don't want to do it again. And then probably the most important piece of safety equipment is your radio, your VHF radio. This model is a uh, standard Horizon HX870. And this actually floats, but just in case I have it corded anyways. Um, now this device probably deserves a video all by itself. Uh, it's, it's not cheap, it was something like 200 bucks. And I think probably the extra 100 bucks that I spent for the features that I'm going to kind of quickly detail is totally worth it, okay? So in addition to, um, well actually, let me go backwards. So some people may think about carrying something like this, you know, one of these uh, walkie-talkie types that you buy on Walmart or Amazon, and that's not a good idea, okay? These, okay, operate on a completely different frequency than marine VHF radios. So that means that you will not be able to use one of these to communicate with anyone else that uh, is operating a serious marine radio. You will not be able to hail the Coast Guard if you get into trouble, okay? The only thing this is good for is if your buddy has one and you guys can do a little bit of calm in between, but it's not the device that you wanna rely upon if you get into trouble, okay? So I'm gonna set this aside. All right. Going back to the standard horizon. All right, so the, the killer feature that this radio has is it has the built-in GPS, first of all. But it's not so much for navigation, although you could use it for navigation. The reason having a built-in built -in GPS, uh, the reason why it's so important is because let's say, let's assume worst case scenario, okay? It's either dark, you're someplace where you have no idea, you have no visual, um, you know, clues in terms of landmarks, and you tip the boat, okay? So you need to quickly relay, quickly relay, not only that you're in trouble, but just as importantly, you need to relay exactly where you're at, right? So imagine if you're someplace new and it's foggy, and, and how are you going to relay exactly where you are in trouble? So, um, these radios have what's called DSC. Okay. I'm just gonna kind of gloss over it. Basically, you kind of pull this and it has a button called distress. And if you hold this down for three seconds, it'll automatically relay, not only that you're in trouble, but it'll relay your GPS coordinates. So they know exactly where to, to look for you. Okay. And, and that is so important. And I think it's totally worth the extra hundred dollars or whatever it is. Um, again, I think this radio and radios like this probably are deserving of a video of their own, but definitely do some research on marine radios and specifically DSC, David Sammy Cat. Okay, and then finally, I will carry um, a headlamp. Okay. And, uh, you know, lighting, again, is one of those areas where I feel like you need to have redundancy, okay? So this model is a Phoenix HL60R. And again, this item was not cheap. It's probably about 75 bucks on Amazon. But lighting is not one of those areas where you want to cheap out, okay? So this thing is probably rated a true, a true 900 lumens. 
So a lot of the Chinese uh, headlamps will advertise 1,000, 1,500, 3,000 lumens, but it's not really a true 1,500 or 3,000 lumen. Okay. Um, in addition, the Phoenix name gives me um, peace of mind. Okay. I think of Phoenix as a quality brand, so uh, I'm going to assume it's not going to quit on me in the, uh, when it gets cold or when it gets wet. This is IPX8 rated, which means that it can be submerged underwater for up to depths of six feet for up to 30 minutes, I think. Okay, so if you are underwater in, uh, and you're deeper than six feet, or you're underwater for more than 30 minutes, then you probably have bigger issues than than lighting. Okay, so this you, this will use the um, lithium ion, okay, 18. 650 battery okay so if i compare this to a standard double a you can see that it is roughly roughly about twice as big but i can guarantee you that in terms of power output and longevity you will get way more than two times of both and um it will also require you to invest in a separate charger but again i think lithium ion is the wave of the future and it is worth it um shoot i guess that wraps it up uh, if you have any questions go ahead and uh, comment down below and i will try to uh, answer all of your questions and uh, so thanks for dropping by good luck and see you out on the water